All right, my name is Jack Dovey. I'm an undergrad at Denver, and I am a senior marketing major. Um, so the name of the session that I attended was How to Future-Proof Your Growth Strategy by Jonathan Brill. Um, and Jonathan Brill works for Resilient Growth Partners, and they are a growth strategy company. Um, so basically what I learned was he started off by using some facts. He said eight out of 10 of the largest public companies failed to identify, um, the pandemic as a risk before it happened. Um, so that means a bunch of, bunch of huge companies. Like one of them, one example he gave was a comparison of Zoom and AMC and how one was uh, very well equipped for risk and the other was not. Um, basically, he said risk is a measure of change over time um, and resilient, gr resilient growth is a mindset. Um, this was the first time that humanity has really been able to kind of see demand forecasts um, and really focus, drill down on forecasting. And um, his field has become much more popular um, because of the pandemic. But um, he recommends that you want to assume disruption and you can't prepare for every wave, but you can plan for what happens after. Um, he also said, keep your eye on the patois. I don't really know what that means. Um, didn't give much explanation, but um, he also said that we can see um, climate change at the city level. So that's that's one example of how people are forecast demand forecasting and preventing kind of like mitigating risk uh, right now. Um, and he says problems to avoid are using binoculars instead of radar and the elephant problem. And then some of the takeaways he had, as I said, was teach the patois, reframe your questions, ask what you know versus what you don't know, ask what can't be known versus what can be known. Keep your eye on the dominoes. Um, that means like what, what's coming next and how the next event will affect the other, especially, he actually mentioned, especially the second domino. Um, and to focus on structural serendipity and octopus thinking. Octopus thinking is basically more of a decentralized approach to your organization. Um, so that includes kind of like letting, letting lower managers have more power and um, people lower down the chain, making more decisions for your company. Um, that'll help a lot with innovation. Um, he said that octopus have nine octopi have nine um, brains because the eight tentacles are all brains of their own and the only the job that the brain does is just very small compared to all of the sensory information as well as just um, general information that they pick up from their feelers and um yeah, so he said, make sure you understand context, make sure you're motivated to achieve the team goal, make sure you have all the necessary skills and resources, um, and that that will really help inside of the octopus mindset um, and create faster feedback loops. So the, take, the last takeaways that he had was discuss your 10K because that's not always something people do or emphasize enough um but then also your competition's 10k um the bigger consider the bigger picture um think ahead of the game increase lateral communication like for example having r&d talk to sales sales talk to marketing kind of have everyone on the same page everyone kind of knows each other it'll make for a lot better information sharing and lead to innovation um, and that's sort of what he was getting at with devolve authority, which was his last point. 
Um, and then lastly, he said, just invest in the long run and that the world has become more volatile than it ever has. And that's a big thing in today's economy. Um, my perspective is that I would agree with that. I think that having a decentralized structure to an organization is super helpful, especially from everything that I've learned at DU and from working in a couple internships over the summer. Um, they gave us a lot of uh, agency and that helped us make, helped them make better decisions and it just made, gave us more confidence um, when I was working with my managers and um, I've just, I've read a bunch of case studies of, of people who, companies, one, one of them, Stryker, which is a medical technology company where they have a very decentralized approach and that has led to a lot of their growth um, and made them successful in many different areas. And um, I think this is important also in general for risk uh, assessment because a lot of companies kind of neglected this in the past and now they're really focusing on it. And um, that has a huge impact on business, tech, marketing, everything, because um, in everything that you do, there's gonna be risk, whether it's a security risk or anything else, um, there's always an element of risk and it affects every level of the business. So it's important to um, structure your organization so that you don't have to rely on one branch or something or one cent, like he was saying, one centralized um, structure. So yeah, I think that what he's saying is very true and his field is becoming a lot more prominent.